Portuguese are the first Europeans who occupied the island. But then they named the island St. Andrews Island. St. Andrews was a sailor, he died on the island and he was buried there. Then they named the island after him. So when the Portuguese occupied in the 15th century, they have slaves from the Senegal region and they kept them on the island from there to America. Before they called America New World, when it was discovered as Chifa Colombo. Then in America also, they used them to work on the plantation like tobacco, sugar and cotton. Okay? But then when, when they have amount of 600 or more, they put it in the ship, like a sardines. And in the ship, no sanitation, no proper toilet, no medicine. So a lot of die because of the bad condition. So when they die in the ship, they throw them in the sea like animals. Because the sea is their livestock, like cattle. This is when they die, they throw them, not like human beings. And they carry the instruments to America. So in America, they used them to work on the plantation, like tobacco, sugar, and cotton. So they bring those tobacco in Africa, and they use our leaders, like the local chief. When they came, they bring the goods for Europeans, and they give the, our local chief, give them the tobacco, mirror, alcohol, and they request their people. So what, what happened here in 1546, the later, the English, uh, in 16th century, the English people came. So when the British came, they occupied the island, and they changed the name James Island. Because the British occupied the island, the name after the King of England, called King James II. This is why they call it James Island. So the British occupied the island from 1661 to 1718, then the French people also occupied the island. The very French came, they attacked the British, and the fort was destroyed. So the island was abandoned about seven times. But the final one, it was 1830. It was abandoned finally. But before it was abandoned seven times because of the war. So many people came because the reason they use the island because the location of the island. This island is in the middle of River Gambia. If slaves are there, they cannot escape. Okay? So but during the 400 years, the slaves they transferred from West Africa to America, it was 10 to 15 million. So out of that 15 million, 60 million died. Wow. 60 million died. So they sent, they, they sent 5 million people to Brazil, West Indies, Central America, and North America. The slaves went to Britain, they came back, saved like a country like Sierra Leone and Liberia to be free from Britain. In Sierra Leone, there are many there, and they formed the town, that was called Freetown. That Freetown now is covered Sierra Leone, because if you are there, you are free. But in 2011, the government changed this island, Kunta Kinti Island, because that Kunta Kinti was born here in 1750. But in 1767, when he was 17 years old, he was sent by his father to find a firewood. But Kunda was a Mandinka man. In the Gambia, there we have Mandinka, Wola, Fula, and Jola. But Kunda was a Mandinka. Born in the village in 1750. In 1767, when he was 17 years old, he was sent by his father to find a firewood, a place called San Domingo. The Kunda went there, he was captured by the Portuguese, and they kept Kunda on the island. Then they kept Kunda on the island for about two weeks. Then from there, Kunda was transported from the island to America. He was sold in Annapolis, in Maryland. So there's a man called John Walla, who was the slave master of Kunda Kinde. Asked Kunda to change his name as Toby. So Kunda said, no, my name was called Kunda Kinde. I came from Kandibola. Means I came from River Gambia, that means Kandibola. So the man told him that it's a journey of no return. You are not going back to Africa, so you better to change your name Toby. But Kunda denied the name Toby. Then later Kunda was trying to escape, and he was caught by the master and he decided to cut one of the two. The two was caught. Then when the two was caught, Kunda cannot escape now. Then Kunda decided to marry a woman called Bell. They marry and they have a child called Kisi. Then Kisi was the daughter of Kunda Kinde in America. But when Kisi was 18 years old, Kisi was sold away from the father. Then Kisi was there, then she was sold. And Kisi was there and he was raped by the master. And the master was called Tom Lee. He raped Kisi and they have a baby boy called George, or Kicking George. That Kicking George was the grandson of Kunda Kinde. Kikin George. Then that Kikin George also married Matilda, Cynthia, and they have Alex Eli. So that Alex Eli was the one of the seven descendants of Kunda Kinde in America. So that Alex Eli came to the Gambia in 1967 to make a research about his ancestor who was called Kunda Kinde. He went back to America in 1972, he wrote the book. In 1977, Alex Eli published the book and the movie. In 1977, and the title was called Wolf. Through the book and the movie, he became popular everywhere. This was 2011, the government changed this island, Kunda Kinde Island, during the International Route Festival in 6 February. Because every two years in Gambia, we do survey International Route Festival. Okay? So during that occasion, they changed the island, Kunda Kinde Island. Okay? 
So thank you very much for listening. Thank, thank you. you. Welcome. Thank you. So from now we go to see the museum and come back quickly. Right. Okay. So if there are any questions or any doubt, we are welcome to ask. Where are the toilets? The toilets here. We also have a toilet here. You want this toilet? Come and show me. If any of you want to use the toilet before you go, you can. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, so family, that was an introduction to where we are, which is Jufri, and this is the sign that used to say, Welcome to Jufri, Abreda. And then the historical sign of breaking the chain, which is never again. Quickly, so this, this means you can see this means never again, no more slavery. But the most important of this stadium means we are all the same, black and white, no discrimination now. This is why they put black and white, we are all the same, no discrimination. Oh, that's what that means? Okay. Yes, black and white. All right, so see the sign on the case means liberty of that. Africa, liberty of Africa. Mm -hmm. So see, can you mean everybody free now from slavery? So see the world there. I mean, slavery is global everywhere in the world. So, so that's the meaning of the statue. Breaking the chains. Okay. Never again, family. So from here, we we all the same while we ain't enslaving now. There you go. <laughs> so here's the sign, fam. This is the never again statue. Stand up. Why you stand here? Thank you. Turn around. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so family, that is the official welcome to Jufri. And a Breda. And uh, from here on, we're going to walk through the uh, village and then we're going to head to the Holocaust uh, Museum. All right. Move for the, for the neighbor again. Ready? And it's hard to see the Kunta Kente Island, but you're looking straight at it. And if I zoom, you see may not be able to see it much but that's where we just came from earlier with a full detailed presentation and my zoom is not doing it much justice but so it's a close our distance and at one point uh during the popular years of the roots festival this dock right here used to be filled with ships or filled with boats, uh, this coming from uh, Banjo group members. This are uh, coming to find out that historic history that Alex Ailey have laid out in his work called Roots. So here we are, family. We call all these things the historical crime scenes. So we are back at the crime scenes, and we always tell people do not destroy crime scenes whether it's dungeons or any of the historical places because we have young generations that need to see this and need to learn from it. So yes, family, we found our roots.